What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you today's video and we are taking a look at some Town Hall 13 attacks. These are my top three uh, go-tos at Town Hall 13. Ton of triples uh, happening at that top Town Hall level right now. Let's get into some of these. This first strategy is very interesting. Um, using the four earthquake spells, some lightnings, plus the log launcher. Um, so it seems a little redundant in terms of opening up the walls, but the, the logs work based on how many buildings they go through. And because there's not a lot in their way, they go all the way back there and actually take out this scatter shop before it even knows there's anything uh, attacking the base. I mean, it, it goes down way early. And uh, with the warden's ability, this log launcher just keeps launching those logs opening up all the way to the town hall, uh, which really gets some good value here. Um, but the super giants, the witches are a great combo. We've seen this at uh, town hall 12 as well, just dominating in this spam type attack. But I mean, the devil's in the details for these and you can't just simply spam, you know, giants and witches and have it go uh, perfectly all the time. It takes a lot of setup and you can see here, um, did a good job making sure the right amount of witches go into the base versus to the outside. Royal Champion making her way through as well, um, as well as you know the queen's ability still there to take out some of these back end buildings as the witches start to die out a little bit. But it works well against these single targeted Inferno Towers for sure. Um, I just really enjoy watching this one because it uses the log launcher not necessarily to open up walls, I mean kind of, but to open up the very first few walls and the very back few walls. The middle part was actually opened up by the earthquakes as well as the use of the lightning spells to take out those scatter shots, which of course are a big um, threat to uh, the witches since they're so delicate, especially with all their skeletons. So, oh, looks like I backed out a little early. I guess I'm anxious to take a look at these other attacks here, guys. We have a few more um, as well. Let me pull up my uh, notes. Apologies for this. Um, going to number one here. This one uh, is an attack you also need to know as a Town Hall 13. Um, it's been around since the invisibility spell has come out, really. And um, it's, a, it's a great way to set up a nice Lalo here. So even investing a Lava Hound to soak up, what is that, three Seeking Air Mines? I mean, this base is kind of baiting, in a sense, against this attack. But by using the Lava Hound, as well as a few Balloons, totally takes that out of the equation and the value from these super wizards is insane um, getting the inferno tower getting expo i think they're gonna get that scatter shot in just a moment as well as the air defense just you know all kinds of value all over the place um, almost got that single inferno it got weakened a bit they do some damage to the royal champion as well and um, cc is going to lure which is okay not a huge deal um, the heroes can deal with it with the help of that poison spell, take out the headhunters and whatnot, as well as one of the uh, his own headhunters here to really weaken that king and slow him down quite a bit. Um, great investment for just, you know, the six troop space per headhunter there. Um, but one thing that makes this so powerful versus attacks in the past is these super wizards get more value. They're able to deal with the CC troops often, not on this attack, but often on other attacks. They take out the CC troops too, and they can also do a better job getting defensive heroes down. They're just a little more reliable than maybe like the Electro Dragon that was used in the past for certain Lalo attacks. Um, and they can just do a little bit more and really open things up for your heroes to come in, take out the Town Hall, whatever other value is there. Sometimes the, the, you know, the Super Wizards will be what takes out the Town Hall, and your heroes go elsewhere. In this case, the town hall was left for the heroes, the king and the queen to take out. And then coming in here with the ice hound, a nice little feature there of that new super troop and uh, the royal champion as well here. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of using the royal champion on the Lalo attack, especially when there's a uh, kind of that nice uh, side for her to come in and push the Lalo through. She pairs well. The unfortunate part is you often have the cannons and the grounded expos targeting her, which otherwise wouldn't even be doing anything. But, you know, it can still be worth it if she can get a lot of value, which in this case she definitely does. So, very nice attack. Ton of troops still left up. Still has the Royal Champion. A free spell to spare. And we will fast forward. Take a look at one more of my go-tos. Um, this next one I don't think is too hard to predict if you've, you know, been a Town Hall 13 or a Town Hall 13 follower anytime in the last, you know, two years. 
uh, maybe three years, who knows, this this way time goes by is crazy, but um, am I at the right base here? I think so. This is the hybrid, I mean, don't need to give it much of an introduction, guys, but one thing I really like is the use of, I don't know what you call that, there's probably a term for it, but that super wall breaker coming in and opening up the gap wider than it already is, and it does make a difference. I mean, there's a reason a lot of good base builders um, will keep that little gap, as you can see in this compartment, keep that gap uh, right at the corner of the compartment. It makes it difficult for super wall breakers or wall breakers in general to uh, open the compartment up, but it's also not uh, clear that the queen is going to walk in to the compartment. Um, and you can also set it up so the king won't walk in. It, there's, there's lots of uses for it, but when you uh, open up the you know walls immediately around that, if the gap's a little bigger, it's actually it makes it easier for the queen to go in oftentimes. So good job there. And I guess maybe a little bit of a leap of faith that the queen wasn't gonna hop into this compartment, but you know, sometimes you have to kind of hedge your bets a little bit. And in this case, she does actually walk up towards the town hall, as I believe was intended. But here comes another super wall breaker, just in case you didn't, um, to just open up that entire uh, cross right there, getting some more value. And a third super wall breaker, this one I really liked. It gets very, very far into the base and opens up all the way to that multi-inferno. So base is wide open for the queen. You know, it takes a bit of time to do that queen charge, but fortunately, the next part's gonna be super quick king down siege barracks down if you can put both the king and the siege barracks down on one side that's a great um funnel for your hybrid here's the thing though take a close look at this attack um sometimes the hybrid pathing is a bit too wide this is the case here it still worked but it's a little wider than we would like um, and you can see right at the top there um, as things move through only a couple miners a few hogs go to the top and that wizard tower actually never goes down so that's what's going to happen to your hybrid if you're pathing is too wide there's going to be a few buildings that just can't quite get down and they get um left up by the hybrid it was pretty close here um fortunately the wizard tower you know doesn't do a whole lot of damage to individual troops so it was pretty close but um this is what happens then your miners start to backtrack like they do here not always a good situation in this case it works out okay there's enough to keep going through the base the royal champion uh, still has the king as well as the pekka and all those wizards as well as the queen, you know, she lost like all her healers somehow, didn't see that, but um, she is still alive and there's plenty of troops left up. So just be careful, once you start getting into like four building wide pathing for your hybrid or even five buildings, it gets a little sketchy in terms of are your troops going to be able to take out that entire width of the base as they move through, um, not always the case. So one bonus attack to take a look at here. Um, had to show this nice little uh, all hog attack, not a hybrid, using all hogs here for the main push through the base. Um, but it has a very nice setup as you need to to take out a base with just hogs at Town Hall 13. Coming in here with an old classic, one of my favorites, you know, the Yeti Bomb with the, uh, the Rage to take out quite a few of these defensive buildings. Those Yeti Mites hop over, get the Expo down, um, get some damage on some other buildings. CC troops are lured. Puts down, excuse me, the baby dragon for the funnel behind, and then uh, ice golem, king, queen, um, everything moving through pretty nicely. And then some sneaky goblins, which I'm a huge fan of the sneaky goblins. Um, I think a lot of people that use hybrid often are, um, or any type of, really any type of attack where you have to funnel well, which is pretty much every attack in Clash of Clans. Um, so they are great value for their three troop space. I mean, they can take out a full... Um, building two of them can take out a storage that is you know oftentimes very important to get like deep into the base so if you're a base builder sometimes it's best to use the non storage or collector gold mine buildings in these critical spots because people uh, can use super goblins if they are one of those storage you know loot type buildings so the uh, queen comes in takes out the town hall gets some good value just from that uh, the use of the battle blimp as well as the uh, king and queen gets, you know, a solid quarter of the base taken out on the bottom right there, those two compartments, and then just comes in heavy with the hogs here, a few giants making an appearance, I think just doing some tanking, and uh, scatter shots are always tough here, so it's it's good these, uh, these hogs converge on it quickly, it goes down before it does too much damage, 
and then it's just to the very back end, which fortunately doesn't have a ton of damage besides that um, Tesla farm, but the Royal Champion is great at dealing with Tesla farms because of uh, how quickly she can throw her spears. Um, she has a bit of range, and also her ability will just, you know, slice through a Tesla farm. So uh, the hogs are going to help out as well. Gets the job done here with a couple to spare, and um, some headhunters, you know, still in the mix doing some cleanup. I think they were used to take out those defensive heroes once upon a time in this attack. So that'll do it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Be sure to hit that creator code in the uh, your game settings to help me out. I know it's a little bit uh, monotonous to do it every week, but I really appreciate it. And uh, beyond that, stay tuned for some more content. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting the channel by entering my creator boost code, BISECT, in the settings tab of your game, and keep in mind it occasionally resets and must be re-entered. Click or tap for another video and be sure to subscribe. See you all next time, Bisectatron out.